Hey guys, welcome back to the second episode of Color Connection with Amber. Today we're going to be creating easy watercolor and alcohol ink backgrounds featuring the March 2020 All to New Inspiration Challenge color palette. And that's what you see here up on the screen. Noreen from our design team chose the colors this month and be sure to enter your project into the challenge for a chance to win. We're going to be using the Adore You stamp set. This is an older set. I've had this set for a really long time, so I don't have the packaging for it anymore, but it is one of my favorites and you can see that it's well used. We'll also be using some of the coordinating dies and we're going to be using some artist marker refills. So these are alcohol inks in Frayed Leaf, Caribbean Sky, and Lavender Fields. And then we're also going to be using some watercolor brush markers. So I've picked a selection that matches the color palette. I have Sweet Leaf, which is a cool green. That's from the Tropical Fiesta watercolor set. I have Sea Breeze, which is from the Spring Garden set. And then I have Persian blue from the winter wonderland set and I apologize that I picked different colors from all three different sets Certainly you can choose a green blue and purple from the same set. I Also have the hello die which is from the envelope liner die set from Altenew and the signature words die set the thanks die We'll be using those for our sentiments today. So let's get started. I have a piece of cold press watercolor paper here and a number two mop brush and I am adding a clean clear water in a circular area and then dropping pigment into it. I've started with the Persian blue which ended up being much more purple than I anticipated so that's why I end up um, adding the sea breeze to the color. This is the sweet leaf so again I'm dropping in clean clear water and then dropping in the pigments around the edges, keeping the center of the circles mostly white and the edges darker. So here's where I'm gonna pick the sea breeze. And there I had a big loop of it and you can see the dome of water that I have on this circle. So I'm adding quite a bit of water to the paper so that those pigments move. And I also want to dilute the color. These watercolor brush markers are amazing because they're super pigmented. There you can see I picked the wrong color, so I just lifted up that Persian blue with a clean brush and then just um, added a little more blue there. So these, these brush markers are really pigmented and I wanted to dilute them so that we stay in line with the palette that was chosen for the inspiration challenge. I didn't want anything too vibrant, but also it's okay if they're not completely pastel either. Um, so once I have all of my circles down and you do want to make sure that your pattern goes off the page so that you have that pattern paper look. And once I have all of these down, I'm going to dry it with a heat tool and then I'm going to come in with a second coat of color. So this time I'm going to mix up the colors. So my circles are already dry. I'm wetting them again with a clean, clear water on the brush, and then I'm dropping in a coordinating pigment. So for the green, I'm dropping in blue. For the purple, I'm dropping in blue. And then for the blue circles, I'll drop in the Persian blue or the purple, what I'm using for the purple. I didn't wanna add my purple to the green, even though that is a blue-green, just to make sure that I didn't create a brown in case there was any yellow at all in that. So. I think these are so pretty. I love the subtle difference in color in these. And I think you could have even done a third or maybe a fourth layer, but I did stop at the second layer to keep things soft because we are gonna be stamping some flowers over this. So I have um, a heat tool here that's a dual speed heat tool and I have it on the lowest setting to make sure that I don't warp my paper too much. So you can see it curling up there. If you see it start to curl up, just flip it over and turn it to the other side. I did not clean off my mat. So you can see that I got a bit of blue in the white area. So I just have my wet brush and I'm gonna dab that up with a paper towel. So I'm gonna do that a few times until it goes back to white and the color lifted really well. So here I have the, I've die cut the envelope die hello from black cardstock. And then I have a few of the adore you stamps and I'm just picking the right sizes. So I want to 
change the direction of them. So I don't want them all going in the same direction. I don't want them to be straight. I kind of want them to almost look like they're floating around in these little watercolor bubbles. So I'm just gonna stamp one first to make sure it looks okay. This is the Obsidian Pigment Ink here. And then I'll go ahead and stamp the others. And then I'll adjust the card panel in my Misty to make sure that I can stamp off the page as well. So we'll just turn that around. And there's so many different images, flower images in this set. It's such a great set. This is a really good one for layering, um, maybe even doing wreaths. I d I've done a wreath with this set before. Here I'm using a sentiment from the Adore You set. It says, every time, every time I think of you, I smile. Then I stacked up the hellos and I'll just get that adhered and put a block on it until it dries, which is just like a minute. Here's the finished card. I love the rough edges of those watercolor bubbles and the difference in the color there. So really easy background. Moving on to the alcohol ink background, I have 91% alcohol here in a spray bottle. I have our alcohol inks that I mentioned before, a pipette, a little bit of alcohol in that dish, a synthetic inexpensive brush, my heat tool with a low heat setting, and a piece of UPO paper. This UPO paper is smaller than A2 size, so what I've done is I used the pipette and I dropped alcohol onto the UPO paper before I dropped in my alcohol ink, and you'll see me do that over and over. And then I'm just moving the ink around. Now there I got like a weird dark area, so I just put a little more alcohol on it to get those pigments moving and then use the heat tool again. Here's the purple. And so I'm being strategic with my purple and making sure that the purple is mostly next to the blue or mixes with the blue and has very little mixing with the green. Again, just to make sure that I don't inadvertently make a brown. And you will see them touch just a little bit so you'll get to see what color it makes. So I like the pipette technique because then you can you can really focus a little bit more on where you're putting your colors. And then if I just want a small drop of color, rather than dropping it directly on the page, I'll use the paintbrush to pick up the alcohol ink and drop it on that way. That way I don't get too much mixing. So there the green is gonna mix ever so slightly with the purple and blue. And you'll see that it just kind of creates a darker, almost a forest green or an olive green. And anytime I do, and, and here I'm just adding some splatter. So I have alcohol on my brush and then I also added the alcohol ink. And I like to leave a lot of white space in my alcohol ink panels. Here I have a piece of vellum and I have stays on pigment uh, piano black ink. I find that is one of the best inks to stamp on vellum or non-porous surfaces. It dries really quickly and you're going to see that here. So this is the ink that I really like to stamp on UPO paper with. And I'm going to flip this over to put sticky back fun foam on the back. I'm going to stamp this twice and you're going to see, I'm going to touch the ink to see if it's dry. Just right now and the time it took me to take it out, it's dry already, which I think is amazing for UPO paper because most inks will just stay wet forever. So I've put a piece of a sticky back fun foam behind it. I've die cut my vellum pieces. I'm just gonna use Ranger Multimedia Matte Glue. And I find as long as you put it behind the ink, you really can't see that adhesive at all. And it does dry matte, so it's not gonna have a shiny effect. So I just put a little bit of tape runner on the back of these vellum leaves and I'll put those underneath our alcohol ink panel it was a little too distracting to have the leaves directly under the vellum flower. I'll just add some glue to the back of this and get that popped up and centered. And I just cut that with a rounded rectangle die. And then we'll add our thanks die, which is from Signature Words die set. I'm just gonna use my fingers to curl up the edges of those flowers for the petals just to add just a little bit more dimension. I find the best way, like if I have vellum flowers, I, this is how I like to add dimension. I will put the flower directly onto the popped up panel and then put the leaves behind it and you can add dimension without needing to use foam tape, which is great. Here's the finished card and I embellished it with some black drops and I just love how that background came out and the layered look of the vellum I th and, and also the drops of alcohol ink as well. 
I hope that you guys enjoyed these projects today and will give them a try. If you do, be sure to enter your projects in the Inspiration Challenge and tag us on social media at Altenew LLC and myself at Notable Inc. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration.